looking at the let's say the future of humanity looking forward 10 20 30 50 even 100 years what are some of the biggest changes you think we can make as a society here in the united states and in other developed countries around the world to turn this sinking ship around if you will to turn this you know, to really create this food revolution that, uh, that you speak about and that, you know, your organization, uh, Food Revolution Network, uh, your book talks about 31 Day Food Revolution. What are the biggest changes we need to make as, as humanity if we are to create a healthy and vibrant future for the next few generations? Well, there's the million dollar question. <laughs> you know, um, my focus is on food because that's where I have chosen to put my life energy. So I can look at that piece of the puzzle. There are other pieces to the puzzle. If we want a sustainable world, we're gonna to have to look at every aspect of society, our economic systems, and why it is that we are, uh, that, that many companies are, find it financially advantageous to offload uh, and outsource their, their, their real environmental impact. You know, if you can, it's, it's cheaper to clear cut than to log sustainably. Ironically, it's cheaper to produce meat in factory farms than on pasture, uh, not because Mother Nature deems it more efficient, but because all the pollution is outsourced and frankly, the feed is subsidized. So we have to change our economic system so that it values life and health and the future of the planet and helps to encourage companies that naturally want to make money to do the right thing instead of the wrong thing. And um, we also, you know, we need to change how we transport ourselves. We need to change, you know, how we produce our electricity, how, how efficient we are in our use of that electricity, so many other pieces. But again, back to food, which is my focus. Um, I wanna see the abolition of the factory farming system. I wanna see the CS eat way less meat. And if we are gonna eat meat, then it, for it to be better meat that's raised with animals that saw the sun and, and knew what the blades of grass looked like and, uh, live their natural lives in in some sense, and um, and that their manure went back to the earth instead of piling up in giant polluting lagoons. I want to see um, a world in which our food is grown organically and sustainably. And quite frankly, we need to invest in regenerative agriculture, which means instead of just doing not doing bad, we actually have to do good. We can sequester carbon out of the atmosphere and help to spike global warming by capturing it in the soil where it belongs. And uh, when we grow food in sustainable ways, we can actually do that. So right now there's this terrible crisis of topsoil erosion, which is uh, threatening our ability to grow food for future generations. A recent UN report concluded that by the year 2050, we expect to have about half the arable land that we did in 1950 on planet Earth. That's a very big deal. It means that we have to grow food for a growing population on half the land we had a century earlier. And that's where we're headed right now, which means mass starvation, folks. That's the reality, especially with climate change causing more droughts and more floods and more instability. Uh, and we have aquifers being depleted and we have glaciers melting away, which could uh, uh, impact the ability for a couple billion people in Asia to be able to have sustainable water in the summertime when typically glacial melt has filled the riverbeds. So these are big problems. But what I wanna say is that we can help in a substantial way by eating lower on the food chain, because right now, according to the UN, meat and specifically beef is responsible for more net carbon impact than our cars are. We can eat uh, more regeneratively with going organic, supporting local farmers and local food production systems. And as regenerative agriculture gets more up to speed with its science, eventually, I think we're going to have a certification system for it, for farms that are actually sequestering carbon and growing their topsoil. And when we can invest in those options, we will be knowing that we're participating in helping to heal the planet. So those are a few of the steps we can take that could make a significant difference. We, we don't have to be cutting down tropical rainforests for rainforest beef. We can actually be planting new forests that can also soak up carbon because we don't need so much land when we eat lower on the food chain. Thank you for listening to this short clip from the Nathan Crane podcast. Please share this on social media and to listen to the full podcast, visit NathanCrane.com.